Welcome back to Aquarium 911, where I help you with your aquarium problems. Today we have an email from Jeff, and he is dealing with some kind of new tank issues on a high tech, so high energy, CO2, that kind of style. So let's go over his email, and then we'll talk about how I would personally address these problems and try to find a path to success. Hi Bentley, I just want to start by saying thank you for being such an incredible resource and support to the Planet Aquarium community. Flattery will get you everywhere, Jeff. As a relatively new hobbyist, it's been amazing and honestly a bit overwhelming to get into this world. So it's really appreciated that you're willing to help people out. With all the information out there, it's hard to know what's proven, reliable, and best, especially when you're starting out on your own. Here's one place where I want to stop for a second, and, and Jeff, this will apply to you, but it'll apply to a lot of different people. Even someone like me who's got a reasonable amount of experience, this aquarium here, this aquarium here, are completely different. And this one is completely different from both of those. They're all in the same room right by each other. And yet there's so many different parameters in each tank. And it has almost nothing to do with the stocking. They have similar substrates. But every tank in general, kind of no matter where you are, is a little bit different. And that's part of what makes this hobby inherently kind of complicated. What is best for me might not necessarily be best for you. But thankfully, I can draw on a good amount of experience and hopefully steer you in the right directions and tell you the kind of telltale signs of whether you're starting to see success and recovery or whether we need to make further adjustments. And I think that's the important lesson that I hope all of the Aquarium 911 series can do for you folks that are watching is it, this is less about the exact answer and more about trying to give you, based on my experience, how I would approach problems. And hopefully that helps influence the way that you approach problems in the future. Back to the email. I don't know anyone personally who's into the hobby, and there aren't any reputable aquarium shops nearby that deal in high-tech planted tanks. So like many others, I've been doing my best to learn by following YouTubers like yourself and digging through what I can to find online. One of the beautiful parts about the internet is that there's so much information out there. One of the worst parts about the internet is that there's so much information out there. And, and as you kind of well put out, it's hard to know what's going to work best for you, but hopefully we can fix that. Back in late April, I picked up an Awaze Scaperline 90P, which is a 48 gallon tank, and matching stand to kick things off. With hardscape displacing some of the volume, I'd estimate I have about 32 gallons of actual water volume. I'm using the ADA Amazonia V2 Aqua Soil with the full substrate system, power sand, etc. I use RO water remineralized with APT, so that's the two hour Aquarist product, Sky Plus, and running CO2 at one bubble per second. My tank's parameters are pretty stable. General hardness, seven degrees, carbonate hardness, two two degrees, pH 6.7, but drops to about 6.1 when the CO2 is on, very low nitrates, livestock all seem happy and healthy. For lighting, I'm using Chihiro's WRGB2 10th Anniversary Edition. Fancy. I bet it looks amazing. I just, anything I've seen that's rendered under Chihiro's light looks really good. Running for nine hours total, one hour sunrise, seven hours peak, one hour sunset. The current intensity is red 55%, green 40%, blue 23%. I'm fairly certain I had my lighting too intense early on, which contributed to early plant melt and losses. I now do a weekly 50% water change and dose the APT1 daily at three and a half pumps. So again, we're, we're using the, the whole like two hour Aquarius line. Uh, APT1 is a, is a good comprehensive all-in-one, but this might be our first clue. We're using APT1 in a high-tech setup. I'll get to why this matters in a minute, but I want you to clue in on the fact, everybody who's watching, that fertilizer is important here. And there will be some people who say, you never need fertilizer, blah, 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 blah. You've got an incredible substrate system, blah, 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 blah. Just trust me. <laughs> trust me on this one, all right? As for plants, I currently have Rotala Rotundifolia Red, Ludwigia Palustris Super Red, Monte Carlo, Dwarf Hairgrass, Pogostamon Quadrifolius, Cryptocorine Wendetii Red, some Taiwan Moss, Alternanthera Renekii Mini, and Stargine Repens. Unfortunately, I've really struggled with tissue cultures, especially the Monte Carlo and Dwarf 
hair grass. I suspect I may have planted them too early before the tank had fully cycled. Even after replanting both tissue cultures and potted, they still haven't done well. The only tissue culture that has thrived so far is the Alternothera rhinechii mini, and my stem plants have generally been doing okay. If you have any tips or advice, whether it's lighting tweaks, CO2 adjustment, or suggestions for making carpeting plants work, I'd be incredibly grateful. I'm genuinely enjoying this journey, and there's so much to learn, and having input from someone experienced like you, uh oh, <laughs> would mean a lot. I guess I would like to know how to be successful planting. Thanks again for all that you do to the community. Your work is helping people like me stick with a hobby, and I keep growing, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's funnier to me than it probably should be, but you, you got me. Two of the photos attached. Uh, I replanted hair grass and Monte Carlo two days ago, so I'm trying to keep it alive. Hope for the best, Jeff. We've had pictures come up while we've been talking about this, just to kind of let you see that. And we're, we're ending on those two, like, replants. We're doing a high-tech setup. We have a fairly powerful light. We're doing a lot of more demanding plants. And by that, I mean, like, low carpenters that tend to like highlight and a good amount of CO2 and also a few other requirements. One thing that you may not know as you're kind of newer to the hobby is that Monte Carlo is quite the calcium hog. Now your GH and K or your GH especially which is your magnesium and calcium are about seven degrees. That's pretty good but there is a chance it's not enough and I know that's going to sound crazy but there's a chance that that's not enough. However I don't think that's our primary problem. Your KH also is sitting at two, which while that's a little low, I would really like to sit at like four if possible. You're having stable things and you're doing weekly water changes. So I don't think that's too much of a problem, to be honest. Here's where I think our problem lies. You talked about how you had too much light and you were worried that was killing your plants, but you're running CO2 at one bubble per second, which low and slow, my personal favorite. However, those two, that dwarf hair grass and that Monte Carlo, these are two fairly light loving and typically to find success with them, CO2 loving plants. And especially when we're coming from tissue culture, one thing that I've personally noticed in my experience is that, and you can even see that a little bit over here, right? We had a ton of tissue cultures in the front of this tank and they've been struggling, but I'm fighting and waiting because I know that slowly they can come back because the roots were healthy and they're in a system that has really, really good things for root health. So in theory, there's a chance that they should be able to come back. Tissue cultures can be very, very finicky, but here's how I typically find the most success. Correct fertilizer. Now this can be a different, a number of different things, right? Because with a tissue culture, it's, it's effectively used to being in a extremely clear, extremely sterile, immersed environment. Only the roots are in something, everything else is immersed. So when it gets fully submerged, that can be a little bit of a difficult transition for a lot of tissue culture plants in my personal experience. And the way that we fight this is by cranking that gas up a little bit higher to make the available carbon more prevalent. And two, you're doing a good amount of fertilizer, but I think you're actually using the wrong fertilizer. So let me get to that. APT1, the two hour aquarius one product, is designed, and if you go look at their website, sometimes it's hard to see this. You kind of have to dig a little deeper into their, their, their marketing fluff. <laughs> it's designed for more fish stocked tanks with less plants which means it's not as nutrient dense or has the nutrient composition we're looking for for more demanding plants. What we probably want to do right away is shift from the APT1 to APT3. You could go to the APTE, which is the estimated index version. Uh, that's usually used for like very Dutch style tanks. And with the way that we can look at those pictures and how you're trying to plant, you're going for a very high aquascaped kind of Dutch-esque tank where you've got a lot of plant matter in it. But I think from the very start, I think APT3 is good. That's designed for heavily planted tanks with a bit more demand in the plants themselves and fairly low fish stocking, which you've mentioned you're kind of low on your stocking and heavy on your plants. So I, the first thing I want to do is I want, I want us to change our fertilizer regime. And I like that you're dosing daily. I think that's great. And I think the other thing we want to do, and this is really tiny, we're going to go from one bubble to two bubbles. We're going to bring in a more comprehensive nutrition package with that APT3. You, you like the two-hour Aquarius products? I want to stick on that line. I'm not going to suggest a different line. You might look into a few root tabs but that's kind of later down the line because you have like the power sand and the big 88 Amazonia setup that has all the nutrition you're ever going to need in the soil for at least 
a year. Unless you start getting into like big swords that are big hungry mamas, you're not going to need a lot of root-based supplemental nutrition. You've got a lot of things that tend to feed off the water column, and we need to make that adjustment to the water column right away. So let's switch to APT3. Let's dose pretty similar to how we're dosing right now. Definitely keep testing and make sure that your nitrates don't get crazy out of control. Pretty unlikely, but I think this is one thing we need to do is we're seeing these plants convert they're going to need a kind of different nutrition level than what we were supplementing them with. What has been having success is great, but they're not quite as demanding as that Monte Carlo and that dwarf hair grass. Those plants are like little sleepers. They actually like a lot more than most people think. And by increasing the gas a little bit, let's keep the light where it is for now and changing our nutrition. I think we're more likely to find success with those plants by making a little bit more available carbon and a good amount of all the other nutrition that they need, mostly in the micro sense. There's not quite as much of some of the micros that are present in the APT1 as there are in the APT3. So that's why I wanna make that transition. We've got a pretty high density plant load with a bunch of different demanding plants, right? We've got Rotalas, that Monte Carlo dwarf hair grass, Stargrind Repens kind of has its own requirements and things like that. So I think by doing this big nutrition shift first, this is going to give us the best path to success. That extra carbon will help a little bit, but we don't want to go crazy. We're not trying to increase like four, five, six bubbles a second. We don't need that, right? Your fish are doing good. That little tiny upkick from one to two, I think should be just enough to put us where we need to be to start seeing success. I would think that you should start seeing at least not the dieback that you were seeing originally now that you've replanted. And I know it's been a little bit since you sent your email, so <laughs> hopefully don't give up hope yet. And hopefully we can make this change quickly and see some kind of effect within two to three weeks, a month tops. If we're seeing positive growth, right, we're seeing what we want to see, which is to say healthier Monte Carlo and dwarf hair grass, especially. But some of the other plants that have not been doing really well start to flourish a bit more. That tells us we're on the right path. And if that's the case, I would say stick to exactly what you're doing for another two weeks to a month. And as long as you continue to see positive progress, we have solved it right then and there, and we really don't have to do anything more until we start getting that really dense level of growth, right? When we start seeing like, I know this is Java Fern, so it's not very demanding, but when you see like this much density, like it's going on here, or some of the stuff like these crypts back here where there's a lot of plant density, then what we might look at is either slightly more CO2, slightly more nutrition, or slightly more light. And that will be depending on what we're seeing happening in our plants. Basically what we're looking for here is that we want to tweak small things at a time and only really tweak one variable. I think you probably have enough light, right? A Shihiros is a pretty powerful light. You're not dealing with a super huge tank, although those Awase Escaper lines are very nice tanks. But you, you've got, I think the right caliber things, I think the biggest thing is just that nutrition. I think we're not giving those tissue culture plants the nutrition they need to get that initial kickstart combined with that extra touch of CO2 to make sure that they can take advantage of all this change in nutrition that we're giving them. And that's the big thing, right? We're adding a little extra carbon so that they can grow a little bit faster, right? Carbon is the building block of life. And by making sure that, okay, we're going to give you even more carbon so you can grow a little bit more hardcore, they're going to need all that extra nutrition to supplement with that carbon because plants are complex. Algae is not, right? If we only did the CO2, we would run the risk of some problems. Now, I know you said you run your nitrates pretty lean, and that's okay. We might need a temporary boost where we're seeing an increase in those nitrates to get them not quite as lean, but we should be able to, once things kind of recover and settle in, pull that down, make that a little more lean long-term. Maybe instead of three and a half pumps per day, we're only doing three or we're only doing two with this different, more concentrated level of nutrition. I would certainly follow the directions to the rate you've been doing with the APT1, just course correct for what the APT3 suggests and make an appropriate adjustment to what you've been doing in your tank currently. And I think that is going to find you the best option for success. Long-term, here's what we really wanna look at. As your stems grow out, as we start seeing success in those stems and we've got that carpet going and it starts filling in and looking nice, right? What we're gonna look for is, does the lower foliage of the stems start dying off and only the upper foliage looks good? If that is the case, we need to increase that light a little bit because the light's not penetrating deep enough through all the growth foliage up top to make sure that those lower leaves are doing their job and so the plant consumes them. We talked about that a little bit last week with the, the stem problems combined with blackbeard algae, right? If we don't see that, then we never adjust our light levels. They're fine. The only other thing that might happen is if we're seeing, even with this kick in nutrition and added CO2, if we're still seeing that carpet struggle, we might just need a touch more light to make sure that those very fine leaf plants 
that Dwarf Hairgrass and that Monte Carlo are getting the level of light they need to have success. And I'm talking about like we bump maybe each thing that we've got on there by like 5%, just a tiny little touch up, right? Just a little increase at a time. And then we kind of watch it for like two to three weeks. Unless we see some like serious, obvious, something's happening inside of a week. We want to go slow and make sure that as we make adjustments, we get ample time to observe what's going on before we make any further adjustments. That's it. Jeff, I really hope that helps you out. For the rest of you, leave a comment down below. Have you tried tissue culture plants? Have you had troubles with them before? What was your solution if you found success? I wanna hear from you in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. It literally is the best way to tell old Papa YouTube like, hey, I like what this crazy guy on the internet is doing. And I think other people will too. It helps us grow. It does all the things that are necessary to help us smaller YouTubers keep doing what we do. As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.